Today I'm starting a course on science writing um, through my school I'm really excited about. So I thought that I would share some of what I learned with you. Um, today I just wanted to give an overview in the video of some of the basic types of main types of science writing and then in the text I'll give you some of my thoughts about the writing process and my own writing process. There are several main types of science writing that you might have to do as a scientist. The one you most be, might be most familiar with are research articles or papers. And so these are things that you'll find in scientific journals like Nature, Cell, PLOS. Um, and so these are reports in which people are explaining the findings of their research. So what they did, um, what they found, um, why people should care. And so typically these go through a peer review process. So the authors submit the article, um, then the editors, if they think that the article might be appropriate for a publication in the journal, then they send it to um, editors or uh, peer reviewers who are basically other scientists in the field, but not related to the people that wrote the paper. And those people will look it over and say, okay, I think that this is good, but you need, what about this and this and this or whatever. So basically then the, if the, if they think that it's worthy, um, but potentially they were, they usually request that you like to answer a couple lingering questions or do additional experiments and that sort of thing. So there's some sort of back and forth between the reviewers and the authors, and then hopefully the paper gets published. Um, there's also something called preprints, which is where papers get uploaded to a server like BioArchive or MedArchive um, before they get peer reviewed. Um, so be aware of that, and I have a post on that as well. So those are research articles or papers, and we typically call the drafts of these manuscripts. Another type of article you'll see um, in that type of journal are review articles. And so this is basically not original research of the authors, but the authors will do a review of all the published literature on a specific topic. So kind of bring all the results together to try to give a good overview of where the field currently is and some outstanding questions. These can be a really good place to get started if you are interested in learning more about a specific topic. And they also, through all the references and stuff, you can find the original studies and get more detail. Another type are abstracts. And so abstracts are actually part of those other things too, and they're also part of a bunch of things. So abstracts are basically paragraph long, usually summaries of a work. So these are, you'll find them in the beginning of articles usually. They'll be like abstract and then a paragraph. So usually the abstract is like the only part that most people read if they even get past the title. So you wanna make sure that the abstract is a good description of the work, not too detailed, but detailed enough to people that can know what type of experiment was done and what the results are. So this isn't like a cliffhanger type thing. You want to get to the point. Um, you can also have abstracts. It doesn't have to just be for articles. So when you go to like a conference, if you give a talk or a poster, you'll have to submit an abstract. And those abstracts usually get published in a book, um, sometimes electronically. And this is sort of how people decide what talks and um, posters they want to go visit. So this abstract's really important for a lot of different reasons. And also, um, you might have to do abstracts for things like our next thing, um, grants and fellowship applications. So it depends on the grant of the fellowship, and so you obviously have to follow their guidelines. But the basic idea with this is that they want to know like what you've what you're proposing to do, what you've done that's prepared you to do this, um, and that sort of thing. And then you probably have to do like reports to them, like progress report type things like 
you funded me and this is what I'm able to do with the funding that you gave me. Um, and so sometimes then they'll use that to like promote themselves. Like we funded this work and look at the great stuff what they're doing. Um, and then, so those are more like professional type things, but you'll probably encounter different types of writing before you get to that point. Um, so school reports, schools, um, when you're in school, so starting in like elementary school, potentially, if you're doing like a science fair type thing where you have to or do some lab experiment where you're growing plants and different temperatures and that sort of thing, you might have encountered the lab report. So these get, obviously get more detailed when you get um, higher in your education. Um, in college, you will um, is probably where you do the most of the lab reports. Um, so these are basically for like single experiments that you do, and different. It depends on the subject and the teacher what the people want. Uh, but you'll describe your methods, what you found, um, all of that that sort of thing. And so those are usually the ones you do in school are a lot more technical. Um, there's also literature research papers. So these are kind of like review articles, um, like baby review articles, um, where you read a bunch, you re you're not doing like wet, wet research, like so you're not like at the bench doing something, but you are finding information about various, uh, a, a topic that you might be assigned or you might get to choose, um, and then you're doing research on it. Um, in the literature, um, so just reading papers and that sort of thing. Well, I say just, but it, it's a big deal. Um, and then writing a report for your teacher. Then once you get into grad school, you're faced with a really, really long, doing a really, really long report um, called a thesis or dissertation. This is basically a grand overview of, like, all the work that you've done, well, not all the work, but most, of, like, the important work that you've done over the course of getting your, um, earning your doctorate, and so it, um, I have a whole post on it, but it's basically, um, you want to put in, like, introduction, where you have, like, a long lit review, and then the results of your experiments, um, the conclusions from the experiment, and importantly, like how it fits into the bigger picture of the field, um, potential directions for moving forward, and then methods and materials and references and stuff. And so you can find all of that um, in that other post. This is similar to what you'll see in a research paper, how you have like a background experimental section um, discussion, but it's going to be a lot longer um, and more, more like overarching picture of things in your discussion and more like speculation and stuff than you would see in a typical, um, paper. There's also writing for a general audience. So this can be either in a one-off thing, um, such as freelance work for some journal or something, or often when you do, it, it's part of something else. So when you do like a grant or a fellowship application, they often ask you for like a general audience summary. Um, I think part of it is to when they want to share the results with other people or whatever. Uh, it's important too, because typically like with your abstracts, it's for a more um, like a more specialized audience, but even within science, within different fields, there's a lot, there's a big difference between, um, the knowledge bases of, like, chemists versus biologists versus physicists, um, so they're all very specialized in their fields, and so they know a lot about those, but they might not know about the others as much, so there's, like, that would be a more there's different levels of like general audience so you can think of like a general scientific audience or general general audience like the public and it can be really hard to remember what 
like general knowledge is once you're so deep in the weeds. So it's really good to have like family members and that sort of thing that you can go 